Welcome back to Element 14 Presents. I'm Clem and like most of makers out there, I have a massive hoarding problem. If somebody offers me a free piece of tech, like an old PC, I just can't say no, because maybe I can build something with it. Let's be honest, if you're a maker and your surroundings know about that, you get gifted some of the old tech that people want to get rid of, maybe a PC, maybe an old phone, and we all got that one Raspberry Pi laying around, maybe an older model that we bought for that one project that we never really built. So let's put all that stuff to good use. These old business PCs are known for not having much power, just enough to do the job. And if they're older, yeah, they're not really up to any modern task. But business PCs have a very cool feature. They are usually built so they are easy serviceable. So with just the push of a button, you can open them up, exchange parts, close them up and have them operational again really important in a business environment. We are going to take advantage of that and make a Wi-Fi router that is Pi based and has modular base to put in uh, storage that we also salvage from other computers, make it into an access point and a network attached storage device, maybe put in some experimental features to experiment with maybe software defined radio and Wi-Fi, maybe some antennas and make it look Pretty fancy. Let's get started. Amazing hacks. Inspired designs. Each week, Element 14 Presents brings you innovative projects using electronics, engineering, and more. The old business PC is a modular design that is very fast to open and to exchange parts, which is great because if I take advantage of that functionality, I can basically on the fly exchange parts for my experiments and for my own projects. I often use a Pi based router that I just a bare Raspberry Pi lying around in a Wi-Fi access mode to test Wi-Fi projects and Wi-Fi gadgets. And sometimes I use my standard router with that, but managing all the passwords and having everything set up without screwing over my own network, uh, I don't want to risk that anymore, so I'm making a dedicated machine. And with the modular approach of this design, I can exchange all the parts, hardware, network drives, and Wi-Fi dongles, whatever I want on the fly, and I don't have to put in or remove a lot of screws. After cleaning and stripping the case from all the unnecessary parts, I have ended up with a case that I can see how I would position the parts in there. It has a five and a quarter inch bay meant for a CD drive or DVD drive. And I want to put hard drives in there and in the place where the original motherboard was and put the Raspberry Pi on the back of that uh, drive bay. So when I open it up, I have easy access to all the ports on the Raspberry Pi, especially the GPIO pins. The GPIO pins are especially useful in this project because I want to connect a switch to it, a double action lever switch, so I can access commands directly on the device without accessing any sort of menu over the network. Basically, I can shut it down with a push of the button safely or reboot it, or maybe add some other functionality like put on Wi-Fi, access a certain point, uh, contact some device or send over files. Or you could even have macros on there that would perform certain functions that you would need for network testing. For the new front plate design, I want to reuse some mounting points that are already on the case. So I use some brass standoffs that will mount directly to the case and I will mount my new front plate to those brass standoffs. To know where all the positions are, I use a sheet of transparent plastic. I just keep the film on there and mark the positions with a marker. Then measure them, bring them in CAD, in FreeCAD, design my front plate around them and then I laser cut them out of the cheapest material, leftover cardboard. When I place that on the real case, I can see where I have to make adjustments because my measurements were possibly off. Then I recut the template with the new measurements, maybe add some design changes. And now I know that the real thing when I cut it out of plastic will fit. Oh yeah, and then I cut it out of PMMA 
to make it really nice and shiny. And to get the shiniest effect, I lacquer it on the back, not on the front, on the back. Then you can see the color through the transparency of the material. And basically it's scratch resistant and will be forever shiny. On the front of the plate, I have a few interface options. First, I have the mentioned switch that I can use for GPIO controlled functions like shutting down or some other macros that I can define in code. I have a power switch that is a leftover piece of another project, one of my first Element 14 projects, if I remember it correctly. And that one lights up when you push it, but you have to wire it up correctly. ATX power supplies usually need you to connect the green and one of the black lines together to make them fire up. And there are standby 5 volt lines that are active all the time and other 5 volt lines that are only active when the power supply powers up. So you have to connect the right cables to your ATX pins. I'm using end ferrules for that because they push pretty nicely into the ATX connector so I don't have to cut the cables and I can change it afterwards. On my first experiments I managed to make everything work electrically but the light was on all the time and if I changed to a different 5 volt output then the light only got fired up when I have the button pushed. The third outlet that I want to have on the front is a BNC connector for an external Wi-Fi antenna so I can experiment with different kinds of antennas. And I've also made some cutouts in hexagonal shape for air vents and they are deliberately placed at a, a place on the case where there are already hexagonal patterns so I thought that would kind of look cool. I've soldered up the GPIO lines to a little PCB and I've added some pull-up resistors on there. Speaking, they have a defined state. If nothing is pushed, they are high. If I push the button, the lines get pulled low. Always remember, if you have physical pull-ups on there, you need to account for that in code. I will use some Python code for the shutdown script. That's a script that we've used countless times on the show before. Uh, basically, you wait for an edge detect on one of the GPIO lines for an interrupt event and when that happens you execute a piece of code that basically tunnels an OS command to the Raspberry Pi OS. Hi, I'm David from Element 14 to the Electronics Inside. Join me as I tear down toys, tools, appliances, modern, vintage, classics and even some new releases just to find out what's inside. Oh, I've mentioned antennas. Yes, we're going to build homemade Wi-Fi antennas. So how do you make your own antenna? Well, this is the simplest form of it. It's basically a BNC connector, a piece of cable with insulation, and the last piece of cable is not insulated. This is a monopole antenna. What you basically are doing is this piece of antenna is not transmitting anything, only the rest is. And this piece of antenna has to be a specific length according to the wavelength you want to send it or the frequency you're using. And in my case for 2.4 GHz worth in Wi-Fi I use 30 millimeters for that. Uh, exact measurements you will find in the internet for the specific use cases. Uh, just Google DIY monopole antenna and you will get all the measurements for different types of cables. But that is a monopole. Simplest version and that is pretty much what's used in most Wi-Fi routers. Second type of antenna, a bit more complicated, this is a dipole. We've got a BNC connector, some piece of cable. I have used the same cable that I used for my Ceiling Studio speakers. Maybe rewatch that episode to see the type of cable. And I've used some copper clad PCB to form a dipole antenna. One of these strips is connected to the signal and the other one is connected to ground and they both have a specific length in this 
case it's 30.5 millimeters. And these together form a dipole antenna. This is a bit more directed than the monopole antenna we've seen before, uh, but it has a bit better reception. This is for experimental purposes, so be aware that there are a lot of regulations surrounding RF equipment and what you're allowed to do and not do. So these are of course not tested and they are not legal to use in a general environment. These are only for lab testing purposes in an insulated area. So none of the frequencies escape this concrete bunker. It's pretty nice to have a neat looking box with a Raspberry Pi inside and a lot of hard drives that fit together nicely and even some DIY antennas. But the main thing is we have to do something with that software rise. So what we are going to do is install some pieces of software. You can decide for yourself how you want it to be. I use it for Wi-Fi experiments, especially when I build Wi-Fi gadgets and I need a dedicated router to test them. And also uh, as a network storage device, so I can put the code on there and pull it down whenever I need it, basically making my own home cloud. So pieces of software that you can use for your version. I use RASP AP, which is an access point, very easy to configure software. You just have to install it with an install script that you find on the RASP AP project page. It will install to your Raspberry Pi on top of Raspberry Pi OS and it will configure itself as an access point, basically like a fully fledged router. You can use multiple Wi-Fi dongles. I use a special one that I have bought like 10 pieces of because they are working under Linux without any form of installation and they are very easy to hack. So I add my own antenna cable onto there to make them have external bigger antennas. And you can have the internal uh, Wi-Fi antenna of your Raspberry Pi and the external one going at once and relay signals, use it as a Wi-Fi extender or make one connect to the internet while the other is providing only a local access point. So there are a lot of ways to configure that. If you want to have NAS or network attached storage capabilities, you can use Open Media Vault, which is like a pre-made package, or you could use a Samba server, for example, that just exposes that drive to your local network and you can access it from any other machine that you want. If you're on Windows, for example, Samba might be the better way to go for you. If you need it more for a file exchange kind of setup or want to have it at work, you can use Nextcloud. Be aware, don't use the mainline Nextcloud version. There is a dedicated build for Raspberry Pis. So use the Raspberry Pi version, go to the homepage and there is either a pre-made image or an installation script for the Raspberry Pi version. And that enables you to expose that drive to everybody that has the credentials to access the next cloud from within your network via phone, tablet, computer, or even if you expose it to the outside world over the internet. So if you want to have file exchange or collaborative uh, working or even work in web apps on your Raspberry Pi Wi-Fi router, then maybe a Nextcloud installation is the way to go. I won't go into specific details on all the installation processes because those are tutorials in itself and there are much better tutorials out there that I could ever do. But this is a list of software that I recommend you to use. A piece of software that I made dedicated for that machine is the Python code that runs the GPIO. With a lot of projects, you would see a lot of stuff moving when they're active, but on this one, you only see a light when I switch it on. Everything else happens in software and in the network. So to show you this, I think, rather nice looking design, uh, let's make a dramatic reveal.
In this video we have upcycled some old computer trash and some leftover project parts into a quite useful device. A Raspberry Pi based Wi-Fi router for Wi-Fi experiments and a network attached storage device. What would you build with old tech that you got from relatives or some people on the street because they know you are a maker and you make awesome stuff with old tech. Do you have ideas for that leftover Raspberry Pi that you have in the junk drawer for ages or some of the other dev boards like Arduinos and stuff that you don't use anymore? Let us know on the Element 14 community. I gotta go, there's another project waiting for me.